Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to the second part of my guide on the Varok task system. Uh, in this video, we'll be going through the medium tasks. So, before I begin telling you uh, which each task is and how to complete it, we're going to go through the requirements and items. So, first off, you need the following skill levels. Level 21 Agility, Level 40 Combat, Level 30 Farming, Level 40 Fire Making, Level 25 Magic, Level 42 Mining, Level 35 Ring Crafting, and Level 40 Thieving. You also need to have completed the following quests, Ichklaren's Little Helper, Diamond in the Rough, Stolen Hearts, The Dig Site, Dragon Slayer, Priest in Peril, The Restless Ghost, Creature of Fink and Strain, Enlightened Journey, Garden of Tranquility, Gertrude's Cat, Room Mysteries, Tree Gnome Village, What Lies Below, Fairy Tale Part 1 Growing Pains, and you must have started the following quests, Fairy 2 Cure a Queen, uh, up to the point where you can access the Fairy Rings, you need to have started the Giant Dwarf, and you need to have started Rat Catchers. So that's it for the requirements, now on to the items. So you're going to need any sort of pet cat, um, you can do it with a kitten, however I really sort of um, suggest you wait until the kitten has grown into a cat, um, as you'll be using it for rat catching and the success rate is a lot more higher as a cat than it is a kitten, so you may find the task will take you longer. You'll need a Chaos Talisman or Chaos Ciara, um, a series of coins, You'll need an Earth Talisman, a Limp Work Root, a Normal Standard Log, uh, 10 Willow Logs, but only if the Varrock Balloon is not unlocked. Um, now, I won't be covering that in my actual uh, guides currently. However, if you go to the Enlightened Journey quest, um, the mini quest you can do after that is related to this. So if you need help with that bit, just go and check that out with the link below. You'll need 20 Mahogany Logs. Now, these can't be noted, so obviously ignore what's on my screen at the moment. But when it gets up to the part where you need the Mahogany Logs, I will prompt you. Um, a rat pole if you still have it, if not you can obtain another one so don't worry about that too much, just make sure it's not in your bank. You will need some red spider eggs, the ring of Karos activated, a tiara, uh, a tinder box in your tool belt, um, a Varok teleport runes which is three air runes, one fire rune and one lore rune. You will need a draymond staff or lunar staff unless you completed fairy tale part 3. You're also going to need a ruby necklace and also runes for the enchant ruby spell which is 5 fire runes and 1 cosmic rune or you can get the enchant ruby um, tablet from the grand exchange. And also if you have your Varrock Armor 1 from the easy tasks, uh, make sure you bring that along with you near the end of this and when you obtain your reward as you'll need the current one to upgrade it to the new version. So that's it for the requirements and items. Now uh, on to the actual tasks. Now the tasks that I'll be going through will be in the most sort of uh, easiest order for you. So basically I try and kind of group them together just to make it a, less, uh, a lot less running around. That's obviously bear in mind you are carrying everything with you. Minus the mahogany logs I will tell you when you need to turn them into the unnoted versions. Now you don't have to do these tasks in the actual order that I list. Um, however like I said I do recommend it if you can. It will just make it a lot easier for you. Um, also you will probably Probably find during this that you've already completed a lot of these tasks um, just by generally traveling around RuneScape so obviously if you complete a task and it doesn't come up saying you completed it it may be that you've already done it beforehand but you can always check by going to the uh, achievements uh, under the hero tab on your interface. So, as most of these will be taking a place around Varrock, uh, I'm currently at the Varrock Lodestone. Uh, I highly recommend you do unlock this as you'll be travelling around quite a fair bit around this area. Also in Edgeville as well, potentially, um, so make sure you also have that Lodestone activated as well. So, let's get this underway. Now, if you're starting at a Varrock Lodestone, the first task I recommend you um, complete is called Champion, and that's to enter the Champion's Guild, which is literally just southwest of where we are now. Now, this requires 33 quest points in order for you to enter it. Um, however, obviously, if you've completed Dragon Slayer, it's most likely that you've kind of gone inside this at one point, and it should have uh, already completed the task. But just to be safe, do it again anyways, uh, to make sure. As soon as you enter the Champion's Guild for the first time, it will come up with a prompt saying Champion and it will be task complete. 
So the next task is double strength weak source, and that's to have the apothecary in Varrock make you a strength potion. So we're going to head to where he's located, which is sort of uh, northwest of the Varrock lodestone, in sort of the rundown area of Varrock. And you should see the little purple vial icon on the minimap. Uh, you need to speak to him and provide him with a limp work root, red spider eggs, and five coins uh, in order for him to make you a strength potion. So you want to select that in your list of options. Once you hand over those ingredients and he gives you the strength potion, it will come up with task complete. The next task is called Royale with Thieve, and that's to pickpocket a guard in the Varrock Palace courtyard. Now the Varrock Palace can be found directly north of the Varrock Lodestone, so head there either way you want. Once you're in the courtyard, you'll see a load of guards scattered around. Uh, you require level 40 thieving for this, uh, and if you find you're having difficulties, then maybe some boosts will help you out. But you basically want to keep attempting to pickpocket a guard until you're successful, and once you have done this successfully, it will come off task being complete. The next task is called Master Scrumper, and that's to pick a white tree fruit from the white tree, and that requires a Garden of Tranquility quest to be fully completed. Um, so if you head to Varrock Palace, um, which is directly north of the Varrock Lodestone, once you're in Varrock Palace, you should need to go through a few different doors to gain access to the garden. Now in the garden, you'll see the white tree that you grew during the Garden Tranquility quest. Uh, literally pick one of the fruits uh, from the tree, and as soon as you do that, it will come up with task being complete. So the next task is called with a 10 foot pole and that is to get a full complement of rats on your rat pole uh, and this requires you to have started the rat catcher's quest uh, and you're going to obviously need your pet cat. Obviously if you don't have your pet, uh, rat pole on you still we can get another one so don't worry about that too much. Now we need to go and head to uh, the rat catchers who are located in the Varrock sewer. Um, so we're going to head in that direction now which is just outside Varrock Castle uh, which is sort of uh, to the north of the Lowstone and you go off at a tangent a little bit but just head right. I'm heading so once you go into the sewer you'll see two people nearby and you want to speak to them and they'll provide you with a rat pole if you um, have lost yours now uh, as soon as you have the rat pole what we need to do is catch uh, a load of different rats using your cat and add them to a pole until you have a full set which I believe is six rats if I remember correctly uh, so what you want to do is this is the best place for catching the rats really uh, get your cat in the central sort of area of it and keep asking to chase the vermin and every time you'll successfully catch a cat uh, catch a rat sorry <laughs> um, it'll come up with the option to add it to the rat pole make sure you select yes and once you've done that for six rats and they're all on your pole it will come up um, with task being complete the next task is called Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Now that's to get a cat training medal from Gertrude, which requires Gertrude's cat quest completed, and you're also going to need a grown cat. I really uh, recommend you don't do this with a kid, otherwise you're going to be pulling your hair out. Um, to get a cat training medal, you need to have, uh, you need to have captured uh, or caught, sorry, a hundred rats in total with your current cat. I think if you get a new cat, it doesn't count; it resets. So the best place to do this is in the Varrock sewers near where those rat catcher people are um, because that's where the amount of rats is and basically what you need to do is keep asking your cat to chase the vermin until you call 100 uh, rats in total which you can imagine is going to take you some time. Now I think with a grown cat the uh, the success rate is 66% whereas if you use a kitten it's something ridiculous like 10% so like I said you'll end up pulling your hair out if you try and do this with a kitten uh, so if this is the case you might need to wait for your kitten to grow into a cat before you come back and do this task Either way, uh, like I said, I, the thing I recommend doing, the method for this, is sort of standing in the middle area where there's tons of rats sort of surrounding and just keep uh, right clicking your cat ready for when it does uh, finish catching the current rat. You can then go straight to the chase vermin option again and basically keep repeating this and hopefully it shouldn't take you too long to catch 100 rats. Um, but I'll speak to you once you have got to that stage. So once you've caught 100 rats, and it will come up each time you uh, get a total of 25, so it will say well done for 25, 50, 75, etc. It should finally come up with a prompt that you caught 100, and then what you need to do is go and speak to Gertrude, who can be located um, southwest of the Grand Exchange and northwest of the Rauk Lodestone. So head where I'm heading now. Once you arrive to Gertrude, uh, speak to her and you'll tell her um, that you caught 100 rats and she'll give you a cat training medal and it'll come up with task being complete. 
The next task is called a lick of pain and it has to select a colour for a new kitten and this requires Gertrude's cat and garden tranquillity and you'll also need your ring of Karos activated. Now what you need to do with your ring of Karos activated equipped you can talk to Gertrude and ask for a new cat and you can actually charm her to specify what colour you want for the new kitten. Now Gertrude will not sell you a new kitten if you already have a kitten or cat with you in your bank. Um, however if your cat is in a menagerie of your player owned house she will. Now this may mean that you need to get rid of your cat uh, if you don't have a menagerie um, in order for you to complete this task. Um, if you are doing that, just make sure you have completed the task which is to collect a hundred rats if I haven't already mentioned that or you've already uh, skipped to that part only because using a kitten to catch a hundred rats is a nightmare compared to using a normal cat. Um, so either way, uh, once you've either got your cat in your menagerie or you've got rid of it, use the uh, charm option on Gertrude and it'll come up with a list of all different colours you can pick, choose any colour you like and once you've done that it will come up with task being complete. The next task is called Luck of Varrocket, and that's to use the Teleport to Varrock spell. Now, it's most likely you've already completed this at some point, um, but it's best to do uh, if you don't think you have. Uh, this requires level 25 magic and uh, runes for Varrock Teleport, uh, which is 3 air, 1 law, 1 fire. Simply click to teleport to Varrock from your spell book, and as soon as you arrive, it'll come up with task being complete. So the next task is called Point of Entry, and that's to use the Spirit Tree North East of the Grand Exchange, and this requires the Tree Gnome Village quest to have been completed. Obviously, where you've completed the Varrock Easy task, you do have the option now to use the Varrock Teleport spell to teleport to the Grand Exchange. Um, if you do choose to do that, you will find you will complete one of the tasks um, I've mentioned at some point. Once at the Grand Exchange, head to the very northeast of it and you'll see a Spirit Tree and ask the Select to go uh, to anywhere, it doesn't really matter, uh, but once you've used the Spirit Tree to teleport, it will come up with task being complete. So the next task is called for fast transactions and that's to use the shortcut in the northwest corner of the Grand Exchange near Edgefield and requires 21 agility. Now either head to the Edgefield Lodestone via the Lodestone network um, or go to the Grand Exchange. Um, either way the shortcut is located like I said in the northwest corner of the Grand Exchange and you can access it from either side as long as you have the agility level. Once you pass through it, either way it doesn't matter if you go from Edgefield to the Grand Exchange or vice versa, it will come up with task being complete. So, the next task is called Dial V for Varrock, and that's a dial to the uh, Fairy Ring west of Varrock, and this requires you to have started Fairy Tale Part 2 Kiara Queen. So first thing you need to do is return to the Fairy Ring in the Zanaris. Now the quickest way to get here, if you go to the Edgeville Lodestone uh, and then go across the bridge in the direction of the Grand Exchange, but instead of going through the Agility Tunnel, head south, there's a Fairy Ring there. Use that to go back to Zanaris and then you can then uh, select the code to go to the relevant location. So the Fairy Ring code to go to the location we need is DKR, which you should know uh, after sort of starting this quest what to uh, or how to input that. Once you have travelled to the DKR coordinate, you'll appear west of Varrock uh, and it will come up with task being complete. And the next task is called the Body Shop and that's to browse through Ozayak's Armour Shop in Edgeville which requires a Dragon Slayer quest completed. Uh, now again if you completed the Dragon Slayer quest it might be quite possible you've already looked in Ozayak's Armour Shop but it's always best to double check and it'll literally take you two seconds so if you teleport to the Edgeville Lodestone via the Lodestone network as soon as you arrive, the lodestone is directly south of where Ozayak's house is, so you can literally just walk several paces north and you're there. All you need to do is trade with Ozayak and it will open up your shop which contains a rune plate body and green dragon eye body. Simply close it after you've done that, you don't actually have to buy anything, it will come up with the task being complete. The next task is called Challenge Vanaka, and that is to get a Slayer task from Vanaka in the Edgeville dungeon. Uh, the requirement for this is 40 combat, but you must also make sure you don't currently have a Slayer assignment, otherwise you won't be able to ask for another one. If that is the case, you'll need to complete your uh, previous Slayer assignment for this one. Now the Edgeville dungeon can be found just south of the Edgeville bank, so if you teleport to the Lodestone in Edgeville via Lodestone Network, once you arrive, head near where the bank is and then go slightly south and you should see a trap door. If you climb down there and follow that all the way around for some uh, distance, you'll eventually come up to Vanaka, ask him um, for a Slayer task and as soon as you do this, it will come up with task being complete. So the next task is called Unlocking Your Emotions and that is to perform the four emotes from the Stronghold of Security. 
Now, if you've been through Stronghold of Security, and I'm sure a main majority of you have, all you simply need to do is use the four emotes um, that are unlocked from it, and they all go together. You've got ones like Stomp and Flap, uh, those sort of ones, but they're all uh, put together, uh, and you'll see me showing them in a few moments' uh, time. Now, obviously, if you haven't uh, unlocked all the emotes from the Stronghold of Security, I will show you how. Now, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is, first off, head to the Stronghold of Security entrance, which is located underneath Barbarian Village. Now, Barbarian Village is located south of Edgeville and northwest of the Barrack Load Zones. So head to there either way you like. Once there, enter the tunnel, and what you need to do is keep passing through all the doors and go into the, uh, past the different enemies until you reach sort of like the center of the room, and there will always be sort of an icon or object in the middle of the room. Once you select it, you'll normally receive a series of coins, and you would have unlocked one of the emotes. What you then need to do is then go down to the next level and repeat this, so go through all the doors and monsters, and again, there'll be something in the middle for you to click, and that will give you a reward plus the emote. There's four levels that you need to do this to unlock all four of the modes. On the final level, uh, you will be given the choice to receive a pair of boots. Um, they're not exactly great anymore with all the updates. Um, they are good to sort of have as a cosmetic I guess um, but yeah basically you just need to do that for, for all four levels so I'm just going to speed up this footage now um, you shouldn't really need me to teach you how to go through um, all the doors you just got to be a little bit careful with the enemies in case any are aggressive but I'll speak to you um, when we're on the centre room of the fourth floor So once you've finally made it to the centre of the fourth floor and you've unlocked the final emote, if you want to perform the four emotes in a row now, as soon as you do that, it'll come up with task being complete. So the next task is called Can't Make an Omelette, and that's to escape from the spider lair in Varrock Sewers with some red spider eggs. Um, now obviously the Varrock Sewers can be located just outside Varrock Castle. Um, now the red spider eggs are located right through the uh, sort of sewer system. So what you need to do is follow the sewers all the way along once you're inside. You'll go past several different enemies uh, and some doors. You'll then come up to a bit with a web that you can slash to go through. Now once you do that, you should come up to an area where there's a long tunnel uh, leading up to that area of loads of red spiders and uh, moss giants. What you need to do is run all the way over to where the red spiders are and pick up the red spider eggs and then you need to keep running some distance away from them. Uh, I think once you go back through the other end of the tunnel it should then come up saying task being complete. The next task is called Return to Seniston, and that's to teleport to the dig site using a dig site pendant, and that requires the dig site quest, and you must have also done some of the cleaning up uh, of the artifacts that can be done after the dig site, which the main majority of you probably haven't done, because um, what you need to do basically is use your Enchant Ruby spell or uh, Enchant Ruby tablet on your Ruby necklace to create a dig site pendant, however it will come up saying you don't know how to do this. If this is the case, I will show you what you need to do. So you need to head to the Varrock Museum, which is located east of Varrock Castle, um, so head there any way you want. Once you're inside the uh, museum, if you go to the sort of southern side on the ground floor, you should see a sort of cordoned off bit, which you can ask to go through. What you then can do is talk to one of the uh, artifact cleaners, whatever you want to call them basically, and they'll offer you to take part in um, cleaning different artifacts and will tell you to select uh, a load of different tools and uh, equipment from the nearby uh, supply um, crate shelf, whatever you want to call it. So once you've got all the relevant tools and you're wearing the correct stuff, what you can then start doing is taking artifacts and cleaning it on the table. Now, um, pretty much all the rewards from this are crap. The thing we're looking for is specific. So what you need to do is um, basically keep performing this until you find a shiny necklace. One that looks identical to the ruby necklace you're currently uh, carrying. Now the best way of doing this is by sort of uh, taking an A artifact, cleaning it on the specimen table, and if it isn't the one, just drop it and then proceed to pick another one up. And you want to just basically repeat this until you get the shiny necklace. Now this can take quite a long time depending if you've got pretty bad luck, but this is the only way of obtaining the knowledge on how to make a dig side pendant. So unfortunately, it does have to. Be be done um, but literally if you keep repeating the process like I just said keep cleaning an artifact and unless it's the necklace you're looking for, uh, for sorry, uh, then you need to drop it and then obviously select another one I will show you in a moment what you're actually looking for on the screen 
So as you can see, I think it was after about 50 artifacts I cleaned, I eventually found the identical necklace to the ruby one. You then want to show that to one of the artifact explorers, whatever you want to call them, uh, and basically they will then grant you the knowledge of how to enchant your ruby necklace into a dig site pendant. If you then now uh, do that um, by using your enchant uh, spell or tablet on the ruby necklace you brought along, it will then become a dig site pendant. If you then rub it, you'll teleport to the dig site, and as soon as you do that, it'll come up with task being complete. The next task is called You Wouldn't Like Me When I'm Angry, and that's to enter a Soul's Bane Rift, uh, and there are no requirements for this. Now the Soul's Bane uh, Rift can be located just sort of south of the Lumber Yard, which is a northeast corner of Varrock, so you want to head over there in any way you can. Once near there, you should see the rift in the ground. Now, if you haven't completed the Soul's Bane quest or started it, you will start it by obviously doing this task, but it doesn't really matter too much as you won't be getting yourself in any danger. Um, either way, you need to uh, speak to the person outside until you've got to the part where you can access the rift, and that's just by going through some dialogue. And then if you click to enter the rift, it will come up with a uh, task being complete. So the next task is called What Lies Below, and that's to take the Dagon High shortcut to the Chaos Altar. Now this requires you to have completed the What Lies Below quest, and you may have potentially already done this bit, but we're going to go it over there just to be safe. So the Dagon High shortcut can be found uh, to the northeast corner um, near the lumber yard uh, through the Varrock Gate, uh, and we're going to be heading towards a statue of Sarah Doman. Uh, so if you head in the direction of the lumber yard now, and um, we'll speak to you once you're near there. So, once you arrive at the statue, uh, what you need to do is you'll see a woman standing nearby and you need to talk to her in order to open the shortcut. Now, you may have already done this if you've been following my guide on the What Lies Below uh, quest, um, but if not, obviously speak to her and she'll say that you've um, been sent and will provide you with a bronze pickaxe. What you then need to do is use this on the statue uh, near you and you'll excavate a shortcut. Uh, what you then need to do is enter this shortcut and follow the tunnel all the way through to the other end to go through a portal and when you go through this portal you will appear in the chaos altar and this is known as the Dagon High shortcut and as soon as you do that it will come up with a task being complete. The next task is called Promise to the Earth and that is to enchant an earth tiara on the earth altar which requires a rune mysteries quest, nine rune crafting, a blank tiara and earth talisman. So you want to head to the Earth Altar any way you want. Now that is located near the Lumber Yard, which is in the northeast corner of Varrock. Now if you have a Wicked Hood with the Earth uh, Tiara or Talisman already imbued into it, uh, you can use that to teleport straight to the Earth Altar. If not, you'll need to walk it. Either way, once you're at the Earth Altar, if you enter it and then use your Blank Tiara on the Earth Altar while you have an Earth Talisman in your inventory, it will then become an Earth Tiara and that will come up with the task being complete. The next task is called Engage, and that's to use the hot air balloon to travel from Varrock to somewhere else. Now that requires the Enlightened Journey quest and one normal log and 40 fire making, but you must also have unlocked the uh, route to Varrock. Now if you haven't done that, um, what I suggest you do is if you go um, to my... Uh, video description below and click the link for the enlightened journey um, there's a mini quest you unlock after that and I basically teach you how to unlock the routes for each one and that's what you require those 10 willow logs I mentioned at the beginning if you obviously hadn't done this relevant bit once you've unlocked the route to Varrock you're able to then do this actual uh, task so the hot air balloon is located near the Varrock lumber yard which is the very northeast of the Varrock lodestone so head there either way once there, you should see your hot air balloon um, that you've unlocked. Now, what you need to do is click to travel to anywhere. Um, you need to click to travel to anywhere um, using the current spot you're at, um, which requires one normal log. Now it may say you've got too much weight to be allowed on the balloon, now if this is the case, and obviously be careful with this next bit in case you haven't unlocked this route, um, if you've unlocked the route to the crafting guild, what you can do, uh, and I did this myself just to save running around, uh, drop some items to get a uh, reduced weight, um, and then try and use the balloon again. If you get it to go to the crafting guild, and like I said, you need to make sure you've unlocked this route already, once you arrive there and it's come up with task being complete, quickly chop down one of the willow trees for a uh, willow log and then use this to go back to the Varrock lumber yard and then once you've done that you can pick your stuff back up but like I said make sure you do those precautionary measures of making sure you have unlocked the route otherwise you might end up having a nasty surprise and you've forgotten your stuff either way once you use the air balloon to travel from Varrock to somewhere else it'll come up with task being complete 
The next task is called Flat Pack Backpack, and that's to buy 20 mahogany planks from a sawmill operator in one transaction. So what you need to do is go to your nearest bank, um, wherever that is convenient for you, whether you go to the Burford Lodestone because there's a bank chest right near there, or you have your own one that's near your own personal house, whatever. You need to go to a bank, and basically if you've still obviously got your mahogany logs noted, you need to put them back in your bank and withdraw them unnoted, and you need to make sure you've got all 20 in your inventory. Now, uh, if you've got a series of tasks to be completed this might be worthwhile doing at the end if you're worried about space or simply just go back to the bank after this. Either way, once you've got 20 mahogany logs uh, and you're also going to need 30k coins in your money pouch, we're going to head to the lumber yard which can be found to the very northeast of Varrock. Um, so I'll speak to you in a moment. Once there, trade with the sawmill operator and then select to buy 20 mahogany planks and your logs and coins will be then converted into the planks and as long as you've done 20 in one go, it will come up with tasks being complete. So once you've completed all the relevant tasks for this section, it should come up with a prompt saying that you have completed all the uh, tasks of the Varrock Medium set. Now this will come up to any, at any point for uh, most of you, because obviously certain uh, ones of you would have already completed certain tasks. Um, so obviously it may be that you haven't gone through every single task before it's come up with a prompt, uh, if that's the case, and obviously not to worry. Um, so if it hasn't come up with a prompt by now, and you've gone through all the different tasks that I've just listed, if you go back back to the achievement tab uh, under the hero section of the uh, interface uh, basically you want to see which ones are ticked off each uh, task will have a little tick icon if you completed it and just see if there's any that haven't come up with a tick it may mean you've done something wrong once you have completed all the relevant tasks and it's come up with a prompt, it will tell you to go speak to Reldo to claim your reward and also don't forget to bring your Varrock Armor 1 along with you. Now Reldo can be found in the Varrock Palace Library which I know all know you know where that is by now so I'll speak to you in a moment. So once you arrive near Reldo, talk to him about the achievement slash task and tell him you completed your current set. So Reldo will congratulate you and he'll give you the Varrock Armour 2. Uh, in addition to the easy task reward when worn, you'll now have a chance to smelt on two bars at once uh, up to Mithril in the Edgeville Furnace. So you've got an upgrade from coal to Mithril. Same as the mining um, ability, you'll have a chance of mining two ores at once when mining ores up to Mithril with the armour. And you'll also have a chance of smithing at a slightly faster rate. 32 battle staves may be bought from Zaf Staff's uh, store on a daily basis. Basis. You get the option to change your teleport to the Grand Exchange by talking to Reldo as well as Rat Burgess now. And you also receive an antique lamp which grants 5,000 experience in any skill which uh, has a minimum level of 40. So there we go, tasks all completed. So there's quite a variety of tasks in this one and there will be a lot of travelling around and there are some time consuming tasks in this as well, especially the one about catching 100 rats. That is most likely the task that's going to take you a very long while, which once again I really recommend you do have a cat rather than a kitten. Now, if you've had any trouble with any of the tasks that I've gone through, obviously currently, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best I can. Uh, but either way, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this guide helpful. Uh, please don't forget to like, favourite, comment, subscribe and also don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers guys, bye bye.